this is might be the reason why some people out there, not me, because I like him and I don't want him to fail because I love his fucking you know, unironic fucking humor and how he mispronounces stuff, you know, with Brendan. This might be the reason why some people want Brendan to fail really badly. You <laughs> don't care if people don't like you. You've just never cared. I try to do things. And if I'm going to be mean, I try to do it in a very concise way that it's like, you kind of have to laugh and respect it, but I'm not, I've said some like really mean stuff, but it's like you, I've got to give you some rope. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a comic who just kept giving me advice. This is like Ooh. a couple months ago. Just kept being like, oh, you should do this as a podcast. You should do this. And I'm like trying to be polite for as long as mm -hmm. I can. And finally, I'm like, if I need any more career advice, I'll let you know. And the room laughed. And the guy was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, you're, you're right. I'm sorry. And everyone was like, that was really funny. I'm like, I didn't, I wasn't trying to be mean, but he like didn't give me any choice. Yeah. I saw him and Anthony Jeselnik talk before uh, a show one time in the green room. And he had <laughs> referenced a time before when he was like trying to like give Anthony Jess on like advice and it was in front of other people. And he kind of framed it as like, oh yeah, Anthony snapped at me. But I'm like, well, yeah, you were trying to like, he's one of the greatest living comics. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, he's a special comic, yeah. rush. Like, like, yeah. and he's also like, he's kind of got this mystique where like, he doesn't even need to use Instagram or social media. It's yeah. like, you know, like when Anthony just like drops a special, like I'm watching it, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've seen him perform enough times where like, he's just, he, you obviously know it's like, he's all about comedy and doesn't give a fuck. And, <laughs> um, Brendan tried to say, he's like, oh yeah, well you should try to like this. And like, he, he was kind of giving him like, cause Brendan in his mind is like, oh, well I'm like a business and marketing guy. So I'm trying to give Anthony just like advice, but it, he made it seem like he's like, Anthony's talking this way. And it's kind of like, Hey Brendan, I think I got it. Like he like yeah. gives him like yeah. he says that and like winks at him. I'm like, right. that was Anthony Jessenix's way of being like, "Hey, you fucking idiot!" <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine the scene of Brendan trying to give Anthony Jessenix career advice? And to be fair, though, to be fair, I don't think Brendan was trying to give him advice on jokes and shit. I think Brendan does this thing where like he tries to give people advice so that he can act like he so he can take credit if they become a success like he does this a lot with podcast guests right he talks about how somehow he was he makes it seem like he was a person that was responsible in part for jelly roll success because they had him on the podcast uh, i don't know it's strange he has this weird thing about taking credit for things like he is the waiter at chang's and jesselnik is baba <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> exactly 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 that fucking waiter at chang story is hilarious isn't it? just give me the fucking orange chicken so talk to me about my fucking jab even though brendan probably did need some advice he's probably you know considering his striking was one of his worst parts of his fighting he probably should have listened to the advice but you know i get it right going loss of fight and you're going to eat some pf chang's last thing you want to hear is from a waiter trying to give you you know striking advice but um, I think most likely Brendan wasn't trying to give him like advice on how to write jokes. I was quoting the movie Aladdin, and it was from Shope's perspective. I am God's note. I come in peace. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I, I, I know you were, brother. I saw you at the end. I, I get it, but it was just mean. It was just fucking. It was very mean. It was fucking very, very mean. So don't try to say you come in peace now. You already made it clear that you want Brendan to fail. You already made it clear that you want Brendan's kid to Brendan's kids to be ripped out of that private school. You want him to be thrown into some school in fucking what in um in Watts or somewhere, right? You want him to be in the slums. You made it very clear that you want Brendan's wife to be ha to have to resort to going on OnlyFans to make money. You made it very clear that you want Brendan to have to get to a level where yes, I only have one car. Right, that's how deep that you want him to fail. So don't try and walk it back now, God's node. We know what you said. You quoted Aladdin and you made it very clear. <laughs> we know what you said. You can't walk that back now, you know? Aladdin is always negative and you quoted it. Like, we know what you said. But anyway, big up you. Um, like I was saying, I think Brendan was trying to create a scenario where he could act like he gave Anthony Jeselnik advice on podcasting and shit because he's not somebody that's super big on podcasting and doing content online like that anyway i know he's got his own podcast but he doesn't really do it to a level that everyone else does it so i guess rogue joe sorry brendan was trying to act like he was Anthony just next rogan you know in a kind of way and obviously he's like hold on like i do this di it the way i'm doing it obviously by choice and also no not from you you know because yeah some people just 
can't give you advice. Um, but I thought that was fucking incredible. And it's great to put those clips together because I think, if I'm not mistaken, some people probably wouldn't have believed BGL without the clip of Jessonic saying what he said there because I think this is an old episode of Trash Tuesday. So I think so anyway, if I'm not mistaken, because he said two months two months ago or something. So I don't think it's Brendan. So this is an old, old clip. But it's good that um, BGL did give some life to it. So, and it also is a bit like interesting because it shows you the utility of BGL. BGL can be very... He can be very exhausting, especially if you read him via the Reddit. When he goes on some of his rants, it's a lot, right? There's a lot of run-on sentences. He just goes in on people. He really speaks with a lot of passion. Obviously, you know, I, I've always said, like, as much as I dislike the way he approached everything, I can understand why he went crazy on Brendan. Like, being around that guy <laughs> on a daily basis... <laughs> and having to kind of like play second fiddle and act like you're dumber than what you are and so like it's, it it takes it's gonna take its toll on you so i don't blame him for having a bit of a freak out but i also think it shows you the utility and the usefulness of bgl because all these insights we will never probably be able to get them without him about you know what goes on behind the scenes some of us could always read into it and know what's happening because you know these guys are pretty easy to read but bgl has been a necessary part of this whole bapaverse drama Yes, he can be a bit intense. Yes, he's a bit of a psycho, but he's kind of our psycho, you know? Like, he's kind of our psycho. <laughs> it is what it is. It's kind of a love-hate relationship with him. But I think, for the most part, the insights he's given us and the peek behind the curtain has been very insightful. So, um, big up BGL wherever he is. Big up BGL wherever he might be. Big up motherfucking BGL.